Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, and it's the day after. Uh, of course, Celtic started their campaign off yesterday with a 2-0 win against Aberdeen, which has left us in a nice position on the table right now. Sing the song, Karen. I'm on the top of the world, down creation and the only explanation I can find. So hello, welcome back to the channel. It's back to the normal content, isn't it? The summer is over, the season has started, it's good to be back to normal and we're hopefully here with daily-ish content for the next season. Of course, it's going to be difficult when it gets to Christmas time, with the World Cup being on halfway during the season. But uh, we'll get there somehow, we'll do it. It's basically like having two summer breaks. I don't like that. Um, but like and subscribe if you haven't already. We are on our way to 36,000 subscribers. We're trying to get to the big 40 sometime soon. And tonight we will have the winner announced for the giveaway. You have a chance of winning the Celtic home or away shirt. And maybe even the third shirt now, which we'll touch on a little bit later. Um, it will be announced on my Twitter later on tonight. I don't know how much time you'll have after the publish of this video um, so yeah if you've not entered the link will be in the top line of the description but i'd imagine by the time this video is out you won't have much time left so make sure to subscribe to be in with a chance of winning now normally on the monday following uh, the game at the weekend i would bring on the newspapers and i do the series called the back pages the back pages the series where i kind of uh, got critical around the media coverage surrounding celtic and i would discuss uh, what I think the mainstream thinks of Celtic and what they're saying about Celtic. Especially last year, it was very interesting because, of course, uh, the media looked at Ange Postecoglou in a very funny way and, of course, at the start of the season, everybody had him wrote off. So it was very good last year to kind of look at the back pages and, and be critical about what they were saying and give my opinions on the articles being wrote about Celtic. But this year, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to do it yet. So this is where I want your guys' opinions before we get into today's video. Do I bring back the back pages? Is that a series we continue here? Because I know we're not all fans of the mainstream media here. Um, for as much as I study journalism and I'm looking to get a degree in it, very critical we all are of the mainstream at times. And there needs to be significant changes in the way that it works. Um, and, you know, some people just don't like it when I go through the papers and such. But it's a good series. I still feel like it gives some wider context to the reporting in Scotland and, and it gives my chance to voice my opinion towards it. Uh, so if you want to see it back, let me know. But I was also thinking maybe to do a sort of spin-off series, something like it, which would look at the overall reaction to a Scottish Premiership weekend in Scotland on social media to get some of the hot, hot takes, you could say, from some, from all support, Celtic, Rangers, everywhere else, some of the worst opinions that we see on social media. I was looking to make a series maybe showcasing that every Monday. So what would you prefer? What would you like to see? Let me know. You don't need to say any of them if you just don't care. But yeah, just throwing it out there to start off our season because I'm still toying with a few ideas and of course it's a, a new start for me doing this full time. So I want to do what's best. I think that looking at some social media things could be funny because we know there are some honking takes out there. Mostly mine. So a short recap of yesterday before we talk about the main beef of this video. Uh, a good win for Celtic, a good way to start the season. Look, by no means was it a perfect performance from Celtic. I think that there is still uh, improvement to come on top of yesterday's game. But we, we got the job done. We won 2-0. We kept a clean sheet. Uh, we were in total control of the game. Um, and I think it was a really good first step for the club and, and the team yesterday to, to start off the season like that. And look, we're top of the league. Not that that matters after match day one, but you can't really fault the performance yesterday. I still think, yeah, as I said, there's another gear or two we can go up. Um, but against a side like Aberdeen, who are, are going to be resolute this season, are going to have to try and improve on, on what they've done last year. It was always going to be tough. It wasn't going to be one of those games where we win 5 or 6-0. Um, I think there was a game that we, we probably should have expected, the sort of scoreline that we got. Um, and, and we had total control, as I said. So I was happy with it overall. It was a great atmosphere. It was great to, to raise the league flag once more at Celtic Park. Um, and, and you can't ask for anything more than a win. There was points in the game where we were just 1-0 up. I was thinking, right, let's get that second goal. And we got it. And spectacular fashion so not a lot of complaints from me uh, I think the only thing to be said is we can still go up a gear or two uh, and we look ahead to the weekend's game as we head to Dingwall um, with excitement I think you know there's a very optimistic time at Celtic a very positive place to be for everyone involved fans players management um, you know you really can't fault what's going on at the club at the moment so a good start to the season a good three points to get on the board and we had to do that after the, the game on Saturday as well of course Rangers started their season with a win um, and you don't want to be playing catch up straight away you know we'd, we'd done that last season we ended up winning the league anyway but you yeah, had to play catch up for so long I, I hope we avoid that sort of scenario this season so it was good we focus on ourselves we get the three points um, and you know not many complaints to go along with that 
So last week, some big news came out at Celtic, and I've not had the chance to talk about it yet on this channel or cover it. Uh, and that was the news that Ian Banker will step down as chairman of the club um, this coming winter. He will be stepping down from the role at the new year, which means we'll have to make way for a new chairman at the club, which is now another massive change behind the scenes at Celtic after a few big changes over the past couple of years. Of course, Peter Lawwell, who was CEO for you know, 14, 15 years, he stepped down and gave the role to, to Mike. Well, originally, Don Mackay, who then left and the role went to Michael Nicholson. We had two massive CEO changes in the space of, what, 90 days. Uh, that was a massive change. We've now got this change. We've had a massive change in our manager with Ange Postecoglou coming in from um, from nowhere. We've never, never seen that coming. Behind the scenes at Celtic, it has been a roller coaster over the past couple of years since the, the nine in a row season, the, the, the losing the league during COVID. Um, it's a, It feels like there has been a massive facelift in certain areas and this is another part of that facelift here uh, that we're ready to see in the winter. So Celtic released a club statement on, I think it was Friday, saying Ian Banker, chairman of Celtic, has indicated that he will retire at the end of this calendar year. Accordingly, Celtic has today announced that Ian is to stand down as director and chairman of the club from the 1st of January 2023. Ian joined the Celtic board firstly as a director in the summer of 2011 and was then appointed chairman later that year. He has led the Celtic board across a period of huge success both on and off the field. Over the next few months, Ian will work closely with the club on a period of smooth transition with his successor being announced in due course. So we will have an announcement of his successor soon, it seems like, and we're going to talk about who that could be in a moment, but news that kind of came from nowhere, um, did not expect it, didn't see it coming, I, I thought that if there was going to be a change in the chairman of the club, that would have maybe been ushered alongside the change of CEO a while ago, but I guess, you know, to, to, to kind of spread them apart and do things a little bit differently, um, is, is smart, not too much happening at the one time, and, and it kind of, it's allowed Ian Banker to stay through that first post of Coggo season, keeping a, a, a hint of, uh, you know, consistency within the boardroom, uh, when things changed massively with the departure of, of Peter Lawwell. Now, um, 10 years Ian Banker has been at the club, and listen, if you've watched this channel long enough, I'm not going to sugarcoat, and I'm not going to lie, and I'm not going to sit here and change my tune about anything. I have been very critical. My views on the board, the running of the club, have been very clear, and not everyone agrees with them, and not everybody will get... No, no one agrees when it comes to this. There is there is sections of the support who are very vocal on their opinions of the board on both sides. There are people who are very happy with the way that Celtic Football Club has been run for the best part of the last 10, 15 years, uh, and there, there are a lot of people, including myself, who have been very unhappy with the way that the, the club has been run in over the past 10, 15 years. Now, Ian Banker has been here for 10 years as the chairman of the club, and in that time, we have seen unprecedented success domestically. Um, we've won nine in a row, we won a quadruple treble, and on the surface, that is to be applauded, absolutely. I'm not going to take that away from anyone who has worked hard at, this, at the club behind the scenes. There's been some massive things that have gone on, and I don't know how much, of course, each individual has had to do with directly with certain situations, but we've brought some big managers in. we brought in Brendan Rodgers, we've brought in Ange Postecoglou. Um, we've had some great decisions been made at times over the club in this 10 years, which has seen great success, and that is to be admired. I will give them every bit of credit they deserve for that, but this is a club whose fans have been so separated, um, you know, emotionally, Celtic fans have felt treated very differently from how they should be. For the money that we put into the club... There's the doorbell gone. Oh, I'm back. I'm back, boys. I honestly can't remember where I was, where I was leaving off. Yes, the club and the fans have been both very disillusioned with each other over the past sort of 10, 15 years because of ongoings in the boardroom that have, you know, left a bit of taste in the mouth of fans. And Ian Banker has certainly been a part of that. And that really came to head in that COVID season when everything went wrong and the board certainly became a, a sort of place for the fans to voice their dis discontent. 
that's what sort of kind of ushered change, you would say. I think that's what really brought in the, the retirement of Peter Lawwell. I think probably Ian Banker has been in a situation where he's been thinking about this since then. It obviously forced the resignation of Neil Lennon. And ever since, you know, for as good as things have been at the club domestically on the park, fantastic with Ange Postecoglou, there still has been imperfections behind the scenes. The whole Bernard Higgins scenario, that whole saga in itself, it showed a real discontent and a real disconnect between the Celtic board and the Celtic fans. And I think that this is another big step now that Celtic did need as a club to try and bring forward change. But the question is, how much change will we actually see? Because only moments later, the rumour started flowing and STV was reporting and other outlets were reporting that that former Celtic CEO, Peter Lawwell, could be set for a return to Celtic in the place of Ian Banker as chairman of the club following his retirement as CEO last year. Yes, and if you were surprised by that news, then I would suggest that you are very, very naive. It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! So it is only rumours and to be honest, you know, we've got to wait and see what happens. I'd imagine there's going to be a process to go through behind the scenes at the club that they will try and identify who's best suited to the role. But I mean, Dermot Desmond being the one in charge of the situation, very good friends with Peter Lawwell after his 15 year stint as CEO. I would not be surprised if he does land himself the gig as chairman of Celtic, which for me would be... Yet again, another backward step. I just want to see progression at the club. And listen, I'm not, I know there's already going to be people on Celtic fans in the comments attacking me for my views here, and they're going to be saying, well, look how much we've done, well, look how much we've won, blah, blah, blah. But we've not really made any significant progression as a club, especially behind the scenes, in a long time. You know, and we've not advanced past our domestic dominance. We need to be making strides in Europe. We need to be making strides as a club to, to, to be bigger and better. And the, the positives have started, and, and the markers are there for that. Ange Postecoglou has been backed fully. We are now back in the Champions League as well. We've got the money there. Um, you know, there are the, the, the kind of baby steps now to, to kind of progressing as a club and taking the next step. But by appointing Peter Lawwell as chairman of the club... I just feel like it's going to result us into the same situations, the same kind of greedy hands that we've had over the club for the past nearly two decades. And I know a lot of people will say, but safe hands, look how well we've been run, we've not had financial problems, etc, etc. Yeah, that's true. We've been run fantastically from a financial point of view, but, you know, there's only so long that the Celtic support should accept mediocrity in terms of being the club that we are. It's a club the size of Celtic. Rangers made a Europa League final last season. We haven't won a knockout tie since 2004. I'm sure it's 2004. I mean, come on. The, 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 the difference is, is staggering. Rangers were liquidated, put down to the ground, started from Division 3 and made their way to a Europa League final in the space of 10 years. And in that time, we didn't win one knockout round in Europe. Uh, it's just facts. It's, you know, I feel like we do need to get some form of change, and, and and by doing that is by getting these guys out of the club. And I'm not look; they all deserve respect in some aspect. I mean, I don't really care. I mean, I'm, I'm not a bootlicker. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say this, that, and next thing, and just suddenly change all my views. But you know, they deserve the. As I said, the, the the plaudits are deserved for what they have delivered on a domestic level. But if we are to make real signs of progression under Ange Postecoglou or our next manager, or just as a club in general, we need fresh faces. We need fresh ideas. We need new visions in the club, and we're not going to get any of that by just reinstating the same guys who've been here and been part of a problem for the last 10-15 years and I also am quite problematic with it because I do feel there is a real disdain for the fans. I feel like there isn't a connection between the club and the fans on that level because of the way they have been running the club. We're so disillusioned with each other because of you know situations over the past 10-15 years. There needs to be change I think and Peter Lawwell is not a positive progressive sign of change. Um, I don't like that. I don't like it at all. I want someone younger. I want someone new. We, we thought we were going to get that with Don McKay, CEO. He, he then walked. It didn't work out for whatever the reasons were. And we landed ourselves with Michael Nicholson, who's been getting a lot of credit from the Celtic fans for his, his kind of opening tenure as CEO. So build on that change. Build on that with a new chairman, with someone who's new to the clubs, or someone, or, well, not even new to the club, someone who gets the club, but someone who's willing to, 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 to kind of strike change into us. 
I just don't think we're going to get that with Peter Lawwell. I think that the only thing we can do is is kind of wait and see what happens. Michael Nicholson, Dermot Desmond and everybody else in the board will be probably going through numerous discussions, conversations, interviews over the, the next few months to try and sort it out. And I'm, I suppose Ian Banker will have a big say in the matter as well. Um, but yeah, I'm not surprised that Peter Lawwell has been tipped as favourite for the job. Um, as I said, I think it'd be very naive um, if you thought that he would he wouldn't be involved with the club to some capacity, even during his retirement. Uh, very close with Dermot Desmond, of course, and, and was with the club for a long time. But yeah, that was the big news that we missed last week. And I guess all we need to do now is sit and wait and see. Of course, it does spot a lot of opinion. I know a lot of Celtic fans get really sort of annoyed when I make these sort of videos and I voice an opinion on my views of the board because of how successful a club we are in Scotland. But I just want to see us take a, a next step. And by to, to take a next step, you need to probably strike change. Um, and that's that's my sort of opinion. And finally, for today, the third kit was announced this morning by surprise. Yes, did not expect that, did not see it coming. But it is here, the, the third kit. Uh, you know, yeah, not a big fan, not a huge fan. I know I said that about the home kit, and now I love it. But the, the third kit, I'm not as keen on. I'll, I'll probably get it at some point when it goes down in price. Some of the photos, they look brilliant. Rio Hatati makes it look spectacular. But just in general, I, I think it's... I don't know, the colour choice, maybe. I, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the black outlines around the sponsor and the badge and such. But, you know, it's, it's not awful. It's certainly not awful. But it's a third kit. We're probably going to see it twice if we're lucky. And uh, that does it for today. That's going to be out the outro. Uh, quite a lot to talk about. Let me know your thoughts, your opinions, everything else in the comments below. Uh, big week as we build up towards Ross County on Saturday, our first away game of the season. So yeah, like and subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you all next time.